G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a curious question for middle schoolers. It goes as follows. Hoy is an avid reader. She bought a copy of the latest bestseller, Math is Beautiful. And on the first day, Hoy read one fifth of the pages plus 12 more. On the second day, she read one quarter of the remaining pages plus 15 pages. On the third day, she read one third of the remaining pages plus 18 pages. She then realized that there were only 62 pages left to read, which she read the next day. And the question is, how many pages are in the book? And I guess we've got five options. Uh, option A is 120 pages, B is 180, C is 240, looks like they're going up by 60, 300 for D, yep, and E is 360. All right, how many pages are in this book? Well, of course, anyone with that book in hand will just look at the last page and see what the page number is to get that question. But uh, as a math problem, there's, there's a lot going on here. In fact, there's lots of numbers and fractions. So I'm curious how this is going to work out as a little math exercise. What's going to go on here? Hmm. Um, well, I didn't really take in the instructions. On day one, she read one fifth of the pages plus 12 more. And then day two, she read one quarter of the remaining plus 15 more. And another fraction plus 18 more. And there's 62 left. That seems complicated. But there is a nice thing, actually. Since we're given a choice of answers, it makes me think of a strategy of eliminating incorrect choices. What we could do is go through each of these one by one and see, in strategy six, if we eliminate any of these and see which one is left, and that would have to be the answer. So maybe we could do it that way. In fact, that might even help me understand the questions. Those fractions and page numbers are a lot to take in. What if we do it with an actual number? But let's do it with the very first option, 120. Does the number 120 work out for the mathematics of this problem? Well, let's find out. So, if there are 120 pages in the book, what goes on? On day one, she reads one fifth of the pages plus 12 more. So she reads one fifth of 120 plus 12 more. Um, so divide a number by five, I might double the number and then divide by 10. 240 divided by 10, 24. 24 plus 12, 36. So on day one, she reads 36 pages, okay? Uh, in our assumptions, 120 pages in all, so that means at least uh, 120 take 36. That's 90, 84 pages left. All right, so on 80, uh, she has 84 pages at the end of day one, 84 pages to read on day two. So on day two, what she do? She reads, uh, where is it? A quarter of the remaining pages plus 15 more. Oh, I'm looking at the numbers. She has to read 15 more, more plus some fraction. Day three, she has to read some other fraction and 18 more, and there are 62 pages left. So in this question, she's still got at least that many pages to read. And right now, we only have 84 pages left in the book. That's more than 84 pages. In fact, without going any further, I can see 120 pages aren't enough to answer this question. Option A is out. Oh, that's satisfying. I've saved myself some work too. In fact, I bet we could keep doing this. Your turn. Try option B. Read through the question. Are there enough pages mentioned in this question for, her, for the book to only have 180 pages? Maybe we can eliminate that one. If we can't eliminate that one, that means you've hit upon the right answer. This is great. So just go through this. Just go through it one at a time. Eliminate incorrect answers and see which one's correct. Sounds great. And when you get an answer, compare it with the answer in the essay that goes with this video. There's actually another way you can approach this problem. I presented that in the essay too, which is fun to think about as well. That is really good all around. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.